Reader beware, you choose the scare. Welcome back, creeps, to another episode of Library Macabre. Hi, my name is Cameron. I am the host here of this channel, as well as the author of the Autumn Crow books. Welcome, make yourself cozy. Let's talk about give yourself goosebumps. Give yourself goosebumps, where you choose from 20 different scary endings. This is the series where you have your main story, but then you get to choose your way through it and decide how it's gonna end. These were sometimes very easy to read through. You could read through all of the different paths pretty easily if you just kind of kept a notebook and kept track. Others are really hard. <laughs> so with that being said, I've not like read a lot of these all the way through. I've, you know, tried my hand at some of these books, but I can't really say that I've read all of them straight through. So we're not really going to be talking about the meat of these books. We're just going to be showing off my collection, which is almost complete. So everybody's been requesting this updated Give Yourself Goosebumps video for a while. And the reason I've not made it yet is because I've been waiting to try to complete my whole collection. There's one book, one book that I still need. And it is like the rarest Goosebumps book of them all. If you collect Goosebumps books, you probably already know which one I'm talking about. But uh, if not, I will tell you at the end of the video or toward the end of the video, which book that is. If y'all wanna help me out and <laughs> find a copy of this for me for a good price, like don't spend $100, $200. But if you ever like find this book in a bookstore or you have a duplicate copy and you want to like help me out <laughs> and send it to me, uh, thank you in advance. So we'll talk about that book here in a little bit. But first, let's start at the beginning of the Give Yourself Goosebumps series, right after this. All right, so I'm just gonna move a couple of my little collectibles out of the way. We're gonna be talking a lot more about collectibles in the near future. And actually, before I show the first book, I wanted to say a big thank you to everybody who watches and supports this channel. We just reached 30,000 subscribers here on Library Macau. And it's also just in time for my 13 year anniversary of this channel. Thank you all for subscribing and for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it over the years and I'm gonna keep on trying to produce videos. So please, if you could keep supporting this channel and I'll keep doing my best to give you more videos to watch. Now you can get three Goosebumps milk caps. In marked boxes of Honey Nut Cheerios, you can collect all six. First off, we've got Give Yourself Goosebumps, book number one, Escape from the Carnival of Horrors. They started off with this holographic design, which I love. And as a kid, I was totally hypnotized by these covers. So this is the first edition, first printing. I recently upgraded my childhood copy to this one because my childhood copy was a little bit rough. I still need to get this sticker off. I've tried, <laughs> but these Kmart stickers are so hard to get off. I don't know if you guys have experienced it before. You probably have. I'm really good at removing stickers. I've got my methods. I've got the goo gone. I've got uh, tools that help me remove stickers. I've got the blow dryer. It doesn't matter when it comes to these Kmart stickers. Stickers. You just have to fight with them and it's going to take like an hour. So uh, still need to finish my efforts there. Moving on to book number two, Tick Tock You're Dead. Love the cover art here. Even though it's not by Tim Jacobus, I think the illustrator did a wonderful job on these covers. They're very colorful. They fit with the, the continuity of the original Goosebumps covers while still having their own kind of artistic feel. So this is another one that was replaced from my past Goosebumps collection videos. I had my childhood copy before. This is a newer first printing that I recently got. It's in pretty good shape. I uh, don't remember anything about this book, so. Sorry. I know I read it, but I just don't remember anything about it. You have to keep in mind, a lot of these books I read when I was eight, nine, 10 years old, and I'm 31 now. My memory is not reliable. Anyway, Trapped in Batwing Hall. This is book number three. I have very fond memories of this book because I remember it was around 
a time when my parents were getting divorced. So yeah, fond memories, there you go. But we were about to move out of the old house and move into our new home. We were like in the process of moving things over and my mom and I saw a yard sale. So we stopped by this yard sale together and I found a copy of Trapped in Batwing Hall. And at the time, it was a time full of change and chaos and finding this book at the yard sale uh, was like a sign of hope in a storm. <laughs> and I remember grabbing a hold of this and being so happy and going to the old house uh, that we were moving out of. There was a tree in the front yard. So I remember sitting under this tree and reading my brand new Goosebumps book. So it was kind of a nice way to say goodbye to the old house and move into the new one. And this book kind of marks that for me. I know it sounds weird, but it does. By the way, you're gonna hear about my childhood memories a lot through this video. I'm a very nostalgic person. I have stories attached to a lot of the books and things that I own. And I think that's why I love these old childhood books so much is that I can pick up any random copy of a book I had when I was a kid and I get these flashes in my head of these happier times. Even if it's a book I disliked, I still think, oh, well, I picked this book up when I was reading by the pool one day. And I may not have liked the book, but I enjoyed my time reading it. We're gonna move on to book number four. I'm only four books into this video. What's going on? The Deadly Experiments of Dr. Eek. Definitely did not read this one as a kid. Speaking of, I've got another sticker on the back cover that I would like to try to get off, but it looks like it's gonna be a challenge. Now you can collect points on special packs of crap, peanut butter and crap, dinner mac and cheese for Goosebumps scary stuff. Like gurgling Goosebumps. Or the Goosebumps screamer, frightening crappy faces. Or the hideous bright light. Wait till you get your hands on these. <laughs> Book five, Night in Werewolf Woods. Another one that I have very fond memories of. I remember like in 1999 or so, hassling my dad to order some Give Yourself Goosebumps books for me from the back catalog. Remember when books used to have order forms in the back? I influenced my dad to order me copies of this and TikTok You're Dead from the order form. It took like two months for them to arrive. It was so long. But of course, back then we didn't have two-day shipping. So I didn't really have any expectations. I just knew that it would take a while and eventually I was going to get two really cool books in the mail and I did. So this was one of them and I have to say one of my favorite covers from the whole Give Yourself Goosebumps series. I'm a sucker for werewolves and this is just really really rad. Here's one that I still need to replace. This is a fifth print and I would love to track down a first printing of it but in the meantime it's a very nice like minty copy. So this is Beware of the Purple Peanut Butter, one of my favorite titles. I finally found a very, very nice first printing copy of number seven under the Magician's Spell. It's gorgeous, just brand new. It looks like it was taken off the store shelf yesterday. Next is a Cameron original childhood copy, number eight, Curse of the Creeping Coffin. This actually might be my favorite cover of the series because it's got some of my favorite things got skeletons. My own book, Autumn Crow and Autumn Crow High Fresh Hell both have skeletons on the cover. It's because I love skeletons. We've got a creepy coffin. We've got a cemetery. Some of my favorite things. So yeah, this, this might actually be my favorite. Another Cameron original copy, number nine, Night and Screaming Armor. This is one that I definitely will replace at some point just because you can't really see it on camera, but it's very worn and it's got some water damage. Really nice cover on that one. These earlier Give Yourself Goosebumps books had so much atmosphere. It feels like a hammer horror movie or something. It's really, really cool. Diary of a Mad Mummy, book number 10. I showed this in another one of my Goosebumps collection videos and somebody commented saying that they were watching it on their TV in their living room and their little kid thought I had said Diarrhea Mad Mummy. I always think of that now whenever I pick up this book. I recently got a nice copy of this one. So this one is super pretty. Nice first printing. Very, very shiny. I just, I'm crazy about the holographic shit. I love it so much. This is another recent replacement. My old copy of this one had pages falling out. And as a kid, I had stapled those pages together and like shoved them into the book. So they were still falling out. And ever since then, I've been trying to find a nice replacement for cheap. And I finally did on eBay. I got this in maybe a couple weeks ago. So this is number 11, Deep in the Jungle of Doom. It's a much, much nicer copy. 
with no pages falling out. It's a nice tight binding. Oh, 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 yeah. And this one has one of my fave covers. I keep saying that. I don't know. I like all of them. Welcome to the Wicked Wax Museum. Look at that. It's amazing. It's such a great cover. This reminds me of Vampira. Here's another one that I just replaced a couple weeks ago. My old copy, super wavy. I don't know what had happened to it, but uh, something had happened to where it got crushed or maybe there was some kind of moisture damage that kind of made the book uh, all warped. This one is beautiful. Found it at a half price books for $1.99, which rarely happens these days for Goosebumps books. I love that the hologram in the back also has this eye design that kind of matches the eyes of the genie. All right, so that is the end of shelf number one. We're gonna move on down to shelf number two of the Give Yourself Goosebumps books. But first, we're gonna go to a commercial break. Oh. The Goosebumps Intimidator. Is it really just a game? Welcome back. We have a very beautiful minty copy of book number 14, The Creepy Creations of Professor Shock. I had a trashed copy of this as a kid. Ever since then, I've wanted to replace it. And I did just recently get a new copy of this. Look how beautiful. It's like a night and day difference compared to my other one. Perhaps one of the goofiest covers in the entire Goosebumps series, We've got number 15, Please Don't Feed the Vampire, with this adorable vampire poodle, which does make an appearance in the Goosebumps movie, which I think is one of the better parts of the, the Goosebumps movie. I wasn't a huge fan of the Goosebumps movie just because I felt like it was more of a comedy, like a family comedy, than it was like a spooky family movie. I wanted something that was like a nice balance between scary and humor, but I feel like it just went pure silly and didn't really have any of the spookiness that I was hoping for. And then I think the newest Goosebumps show, the Disney Plus one, went way too spooky and not family friendly enough. That needs to be a fine balance. I don't need a PG-13 rated Goosebumps series. Arl Stein figured out the formula with his books why can't we figure it out with a Goosebumps show or movie? Well, no, scratch that, because we already did figure it out with the original Goosebumps show from the 90s. Perfect. I know it's silly, I know it's campy, but that's the point. That's what it's supposed to be, and it was just, just enough. We had genuinely spooky, and we had the, the silly side of it to keep it friendly for kids, so it was great. We need to go back to that. I hope one day we do. But when it comes to that first Goosebumps movie, I loved that they included something a little more obscure, like the the vampire poodle from this book, because I didn't expect them to do anything obscure for the movie. I thought it would be all slappy, and for the most part, it is. But I loved that they grabbed a hold of this vampire poodle and put her into the, the movie. That was a good part. Anyway, I can't remember if when I filmed my last collection video, if I owned a copy of this or not, because I did own one, and then I ended up giving it as a gift and then I was looking for another copy of it. So I, I finally found another copy. So yeah, that's now back in my collection. And likewise, I can't remember if I owned this one yet. So this is number 16, Secret Agent Grandma, which I did read as a kid. I checked it out from the library and my mom and I read it together and loved it. But this one uh, I did not own until pretty recently. A viewer sent me a copy uh, that served as a nice placeholder. Uh, for a good long while, and then I finally found uh, another copy that looks pretty much brand new. So uh, this is now my official copy for my collection. It's a great cover. The colors are just wonderful on this one. And then another one that I just recently replaced within the last couple of months is book number 17, Little Comic Shop of Horrors, which was one of my faves when I was a kid. I loved comic books as a kid. I still love them now. In fact, I'm starting to get back into comic books again, which has been a lot of fun. My last copy had a big crease all the way through the front cover. So I finally found a nice, cheap, affordable, minty first printing to replace it. Alfie, these new Goosebumps flick pics are really scary. No, no. Oh. Thank 
things. Oh. And then oh. here's a goosebumps flick pick in your skips. Number 18, Attack of the Beastly Babysitter. Such a cool cover. I remember seeing this at the library as a kid and being kind of creeped out by this babysitter who's actually a rat. And this one is also great. We've got book number 19, Escape from Camp Run for Your Life, which has the gnarliest cover of all of them. These zombies have like worms coming out of their heads. It's so gross. I've talked about this one before, how it was one of my faves growing up. I have a picture of me in my neighbor's backyard. We're just chilling out on some lawn chairs and I have a copy of this book laying in my lap. Number 20, Toy Terror, Batteries Included. Blah! We're paying tribute to Chucky a little bit here. Actually, it looks a little bit more like Dolly Dearest to me. Has anyone ever seen that movie? Number 21, The Twisted Tale of Tiki Island, which I did get from the book fair as a kid. And I remember they put this stamp on the inside and I thought to myself, you ruined the book. I hated when they would open it up and put a stamp inside of it. I'm like, why? I didn't ask for that. And the last book with the holographic cover design. After this book, they decided to switch the design of the covers. So it's number 22, Return to the Carnival of Horrors, which has some ghosts on a roller coaster just having the time of their lives, uh, of their deaths. <laughs> here, there's a better view of them here on the back because it's a little bit closer up. And <laughs> I like these ones in the back that are like getting whiplash back there. <laughs> it's so funny. All right, now we're going to get into the next set of books, which is when they changed the cover. There wasn't a change in series or anything. They just decided to change the design. But before we get into the Black Spine editions, as they're commonly called, let's uh, take another commercial break. It's the Goosebumps Screaming Keychain to get your very own see specially marked boxes of Dunkaroos for details. But beware, not everyone will love it as much as you do. <laughs> Welcome back. We've got number 23, Zapped in Space. This is the introduction to the black spines. All the spines are black. As you can see, the layout is completely different. Gone are the holographic designs of the covers. I don't know why they changed the layout of the covers. I remember when this happened, I was really kind of aggravated with it because I loved the holographic covers. And maybe it was in response to the dwindling book sales and they thought it would just be cheaper to print them like this, which they probably were. I like the artwork, okay? The artwork for these books is fine. I just don't like the more plain layout. That being said, a lot of these books are really, really rare and uh, have become collectible. So I'm glad to have all of these still. Even though I didn't like the designs very much, I still continued to buy them every month, which ended up saving me a lot of money because these books are pretty expensive now. Number 24, Lost in Stink Eye Swamp. A very pretty copy of that. Shop Till You Drop Dead. Love the title. Love this purple monster on the cover. Kind of looks more 80s to me than it does late 90s. This is number 25 in the series. I had a copy of this as a kid, read it a bunch of times, and for that reason, it was in really bad shape. But I recently found a whole bunch of these Give Yourself Goosebumps Black Spine editions at a half price books for pretty cheap. They were like a couple dollars a piece. I couldn't believe it because these are such rare books and they were all in beautiful condition. So I was able to replace my other one. Now the horror is in your hands with Goosebumps Monster Head Maker. Create four hideous heads from the chilling tales of R.L. Stein or eye popping creations from your imagination that drip and drool. I've got a runny nose. Talk about gross. Crack open a dread head. Monster blood. Or try edible brain bites. Look, Dad. Handsome. <laughs> Goosebumps brain bites you can eat. Monster head maker and dreadhead you can't. Eat sold separately. Unfortunately, I still need to replace my old childhood copy of number 26, Alone in Snake Bite Cabin. Or sorry, Canyon, not Cabin. It's a third printing. It must have sold pretty well because I bought this like a week or two after it came out. If it was in its third printing by then, I'd say this one actually performed pretty well, but I need to find that first printing. So I'm still on the lookout for that one. I also need to replace this one because it's got this crease down the front cover. It's not that bad. It just annoys me because it's in such good condition. But then you got that crease. Ugh. This is called Checkout Time at the Dead End Hotel. 
I've read this one. Cover really drew me in because obviously skeleton, I love skeletons. I have a skeleton inside of my body, so I'm actually very partial to them. That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> I remember having a lot of fun with this book, but I did read this in the doctor's office as a kid. I had something, I forget what it was, some big checkup of some kind. It may have been when I injured my thumb and I had to get my stitches out. I was really, really anxious about that. Like my heart was just racing. So I, I brought this book with me to distract me. But now whenever I look at this book, I think about reading it in the doctor's office. So there's some not good memories attached to this one. All right, if you've seen my past Goosebumps collection videos, you would know that I didn't own a copy of this one at that time. So this is number 28, Night of a Thousand Claws. I finally have it. It's finally in my collection. I can finally say I own this pretty rare book overall. And I can finally read this one. I've never read it before. Here's another Cameron original copy. This is number 29, Invaders from the Big Screen. I love movies and I love going to movie theaters. So uh, this one is all about, you know, being at a movie theater and choosing which movie you want to watch. And then the, of course, the monsters from the screen come out or you go into the movie. I still want to replace it because this copy does have its flaws, but still, it's not too bad. Here's one that I did recently replace at Half Price Books, like I was talking about. So this is number 30, Your Plant Food. A nice minty copy to replace my childhood copy that was torn to bits. <laughs> Want some goosebumps? Glow in the dark tattoos? You can find them in Honeycomb and these other scary folk cereals. Two in each mark box, 24 to collect it all. Goosebumps tattoos, wear them and scare them. Now this one is my favorite Give Yourself Goosebumps book, or it's in my top two. It's hard for me to choose between this one and another one that we're going to talk about here in a minute. I read this one probably 10 times all the way through. So this is number 31, The Werewolf of Twisted Tree Lodge. This is about a kid that goes on a riding retreat to like this old haunted house. There's this author that's doing this children's writing retreat and you get to go and uh, spend time with this author and all the other kids who are also writers aspiring writers you know me being an author and, and wanting to be an author as a kid this was like my dream scenario even with all of the spooky stuff and the werewolves i would have loved <laughs> to spend a night in twisted tree lodge here's another really fun one this is number 32 it's only a nightmare Love the cover art. It's very scary. This is about a, a kid who's trying to get to sleep and he's having like really weird dreams and you're trying to navigate these nightmares. It reminded me of the video game Nightmare Ned. Do you remember that video game? Did anybody play that? Was it just me? It came from the internet, book number 33, which is super meta because we've got a poster here on the kid's wall of the previous book, It's Only a Nightmare, and a whole stack of Give Yourself Goosebumps books right next to the computer. How cool is that? I love it. This is book number 34, Elevator to Nowhere, which has a funny cover to me. It looks like he's about to get his head chopped off. Hocus Pocus Horror. Look at this guy. Such a cool, creepy character. Here's another one that I recently replaced, thanks to Half Price Books. This is number 36, Ship of Ghouls. A nice, beautiful, minty fresh copy for my collection. Gosh, there are a lot of books here. We're on number 37, Escape from Horror House. Another one of my favorites that I read quite a few times. This is about just a haunted house where there's poltergeists and stuff. Love the cover with this house. Kind of reminds me of Monster House a little bit. Number 38, Into the Twister of Terror, is one that I didn't own before. This is a recent acquisition. So happy to add this one to my collection. Finally, it's such a funny cover. This poor pug. Oh no, he got sucked up in the twister. Here's another one that I don't think I owned before. So this is a newer one that I was recently able to find at Half Price Books. So this is number 39, Scary Birthday to You. I recently read this one and it was fine. It's not my favorite Give Yourself Goosebumps book, but I still had a lot of fun reading it. Everything that happens in this one is just kind of 
random. And I guess that's the case for a lot of these Give Yourself Goosebumps books, but this one in particular just felt very random. Number 40, Zombie School. Finally have a beautiful mint condition copy of this one. So spooky. Danger Time is another one that I didn't own before. So I guess during this point in the series, when I was a kid, I was having a hard time collecting all of the books. You know, I was little, I didn't have my own money. I just had to try to bribe my parents into buying me them. Number 41, All Day Nightmare. This is one I'd like to replace. I found this in a used bookstore maybe 10 years ago or so. And it's, you know, got some wear. There's like a rip here on the cover and some dented corners. This is actually the final original book in the series. So there's 42 books total. And then you've got these special editions. There's eight of those. And we're gonna look at those next, right after the commercial. They're coming. This is so weird. KFC has four Goosebumps books for $2.29 each with any purchase, including the Mega Meal. There's so much food, it's scary. I don't believe it. But it won't be long before Goosebumps books disappear. <laughs> don't say you're not hungry. Hello, welcome back. So we've got book number one in the special edition Give Yourself Goosebumps book series. These I think were just supposed to be harder, more difficult to do. And if memory serves me right, uh, yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> These were actually pretty difficult. This is one that I did not own before. So I just recently added this to my collection. Book number one, Into the Jaws of Doom. Book number two, <laughs> Return to Terror Tower. Very, very rare. In fact, all of these special editions are incredibly hard to find and can be very expensive online. I found this at Half Price Books for like $1.99, maybe about a year or two ago. And it's rough. It's got its flaws. It's got some tears on the cover and some dents and bends and whatnot, creases. But still, I'm really excited that I can say I have this now because I had a really hard time finding a copy of this. One day, if I can, I'm going to replace it with a nicer copy, but I don't wanna to have to spend $50 on this book. I'd like to just find a good deal on it if I can. That's my thing is that I collect a lot of books. I don't just collect goosebumps. So I can't really afford to go on eBay and spend these astronomical prices. I need to find the best deals I can on all of my books if I want to keep on collecting all of these different books and different series. The way I look at it is that a lot of these people who are selling the books on eBay are getting them from somewhere. You know, they're going out into bookstores or going on Facebook Marketplace and buying them for super, super cheap and then selling them for $100. I want to bypass them, the middle people, and try to go straight to those bookstores myself and buy them for cheap so that way I don't have to shell out all this money. It's silly. It's silly. We do have a childhood copy of this one here. This is number three, Trapped in the Circus of Fear, which I kept in nice shape. Thank God, because it's hard to find this book. So I'm glad I was able to buy it brand new as a kid and just already have it in my collection. No need to go and try to find a copy of this. Number four, One Night in Pain House. This is the one I was talking about that is tied with the Wolf of Twisted Tree Lodge. This is a Halloween book. It takes place on Halloween. Some kids are like breaking and entering into this haunted house where they have filmed a bunch of these horror movies, but apparently the house itself is actually haunted. It's a really fun one. If you want a nice Halloween adventure, this is really good. Another rare one is book number five. Not quite as rare as some of the others, but I have seen it go for quite a bit, like 20 to $30. Here's another one that I've had since childhood. This is also super rare. It's number six, Revenge of the Body Squeezers, which the body squeezers make their first appearance in the Goosebump series 2000 with Invasion of the Body Squeezers part one and part two. And this uh, kind of continues off of that, but it's a choose your own adventure style. So yeah, really cool cover. And it's cool to see the body squeezers come back for another book. Pizza Hut is giving everyone goosebumps with a free goosebumps hot a mask and chilling spooky spool with the six ninety five kids works. Watch it change before your very eyes scream. But honey, they're disappearing fast. Yeah. And then we've got one more book, and that is because I am missing book number seven. 
Trick or Trapped, which is probably the rarest Goosebumps book of them all, or the most expensive. At least that's been the case for me. That's the one I'm missing, that's book seven, but I do have book eight, which is the final special edition, which is also super rare, but luckily I bought it as a kid, and this is Weekend at Poison Lake. And that is my entire Give Yourself Goosebumps collection. My God, I did not realize this video would be so long, but there are a lot of books in this series. There's over 50. Well, I take that back. There's 50 total, 50, including the special editions. Thank you for sticking through to the end of this video. If you did, leave me a comment down below, just letting me know what you thought about these books. Leave me a like if you enjoyed it, that really helps the channel. And if you wanna go a step further and share it on social media, share it with your friends, that is also a huge help. Word of mouth means everything. And don't forget, you can also access exclusive videos on my Patreon for as little as $2 a month. If you subscribe to my Patreon right now for $2, you would have access to a bunch of new videos and also a back catalog of a bunch of Patreon videos. So you would literally be getting hundreds and hundreds of videos for just $2. So just putting it out there, it's a really great deal if I do say so myself. And I would love to see you over there. We have a lot of fun over on Patreon. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next episode of Library Macabre. Later creeps.